welcome back girls so today's topic is the development of dictionaries it has a long history to go yes so how this development of dictionaries help in the evolution of a language or enriching the vocabulary so how far we are successful in recording the uh, vocabulary time to time okay so of course you know that dictionary is a book containing the words of a language and you know they you can find it in alphabetic order meanings will be there etymology sometimes examples will be given in a more extensive uh, dictionary you might find um, it's a noun usage adjective usage etc also and the ancients in the classical world as well as the people of the middle ages were accustomed to the use of glossaries or collection of glosses gloss means a latin term gloss is a latin term for a rare word needing special explanation gloss means a rare word needing special explanation so that is what actually uh, the that serves the purpose of dictionary rare word needing special explanation and at the time of renaissance of course you know it was there was a boom of uh, knowledge and uh, there was a high demand for the um, uh, scholars in the society there was a need for uh, learning more and more latin and greek uh, and uh, introducing terms to their own language etc etc so many things were happening around so uh, so there uh, before renaissance there were actually efforts that has been made in the um, this mid centuries itself in the 16th um, by the mid of 16th century itself uh to formulate some kind of dictionary so the i'll just mention the trajectory in um in a minute and then we'll move on to the detailed uh, version so the first ever attempt to make a dictionary was made by thomas cooper in 1565 so it happened in 1565 the name of the dictionary and all we'll look into in the coming paragraphs and uh, after that uh, one of the most uh, notable dictionaries came into existence in 1604 so and nothing happened in between 1565 and 1604 and it was formulated by robert cordray and then you have edward phillips dictionary in 1658 stephen skinner's dictionary in 1667 uh, then francis junius uh dictionary in 1677 uh, so stephen skinner's in 1667 and francis junius in 1677 john casey's dictionary in 1708 nathan bailey's dictionary in 1730 samuel johnson's dictionary the most uh, one of the most uh, important dictionaries of the time in 1755 richard uh, charles richardson's dictionary in 1836 so after 1836 we have got all these things are mentioned in the notes i was just giving that timeline so that the things will be more clearer to you and after 1836 there were so many editors and uh, all these people sit together and compile a dictionary so we uh, can't mention one person and uh, one of the notable person of in the uh, beginning of 19th century was uh, james murray and after that uh, so many dictionaries like uh, daniel jones dictionary uh, then marian webster's dictionary noah's uh, web um, dictionary and all came up that we'll look into when we discuss so this is the um, trajectory in uh, one line thomas cooper robert cordray edward phillips stephen skinner francis junius john kersey nathan bailey samuel johnson charles richardson and james murray now we look into this in detail the first ever attempt was made by thomas cooper as i mentioned in 1565 and his dictionary was known as thesaurus linguis romanus at britannica this contained explanations of a number of difficult and obsolete words uh, and after that in 1604 uh, robert cordray published a dictionary named a table of alphabetical english words it was termed as a table of alphabetical english words which was the next attempt in lexicography lexicography of course you know the process of compiling a dictionary this was followed by edward phillips uh, in 1658 as i mentioned and the dictionary is termed as new world of english words 
In the next stage of development, Stephen Skinner published Etymology and Linguated Anglicane in 1667. So let us look into what is new with it. Uh, the name seems interesting, Etymology and Linguated Anglicane. In addition to the meanings of the words, this etymology, uh, their etymologies were also, etymology means the origin of um, um, the, your uh, effort to find the origin of the meaning of a particular word how the word um, word got its own meaning these etymologies were also given by skinner because the exact meaning of the word can be better understood by knowing its history before entering the language we have already discussed how these meanings changed you have already dealt with the essay of semantics where you understood how the um, meanings changes uh, throughout these ages so this uh, history was also given in a nutshell in stephen skinner's dictionary Another etymological dictionary like that of Skinner was published in 1677 by a Dutch scholar named Francis Junius entitled Etymological Anglicanum. Both these dictionaries were in Latin. Now, what happens after this? After this preliminary attempts in lexicography, the first dictionary in the usual sense was published in 1708 by John Kersey. It was entitled Dictionarium anglo britannicum in 1708 a general it means that a general english dictionary it much sounds like our modern dictionaries right in 1730 nathan bailey's more scholarly work dictionary was followed uh, it was simply named as dictionary in 1730 nathan bailey it was the most advanced dictionary at that time bailey introduced into the dictionary in the form of illustrations uh, of definitions and meanings by quotations from the best complementary works. Now we look into Samuel Johnson's Dictionary of the English Language, which was published in 1755, which is considered as this is most uh, most important to you because this can be asked for for mark question, paragraph question. So please keep note, um, uh, pay attention, give more attention to Samuel Johnson's Dictionary and learn it um, properly. Published. So it got published in 1755. We find the most unprecedented progress made being made in lexicography. This great work soon became accepted as the arbiter of English usage and the standard for English spelling. Of course, you know that what is the speciality of this dictionary? Uh, Johnson used to give so many beautiful illustrations, illustrative quotations, phrases, uh, his definitions. So he was kind of enriching the vocabulary. His definitions on the whole are clear, concise, effective and scholarly because that uh, the what the spirit of that age is reflected in that um, the compilation of that dictionary too. Okay, they were clear, concise, effective and scholarly. His definition of oats is uh, food for horses in England and for men in Scotland. So this is kind of pretty, you know, interesting and cigarette as a roll of tobacco with a spark at one end and a fool at the other are often caught you might have heard that then it is it has got a kind of universal acceptance because of its the brilliance that is being implied into it and also uh, the usage and the kind of spelling he used though johnson has begun his great work with the avowed intention of correcting english language and though he believed that the function of dictionary was one by which the pronunciation should be fixed um, he couldn't actually attain all of these things but anyway it has its own importance he wanted to make language more pure and um, but finally he understood that english can't be fixed like that as i mentioned uh, in the other lectures english is a stress based language and not syllable based so there is always a limit to fix the meanings as well as fixing the spelling and pronunciation it is not possible there are many englishes and we have to accepted that he understood so that's the importance of dr johnson's dictionary now the next stage in the i hope you understood well this uh, about dr johnson's dictionary and there is um, so, uh, no need of going through don't forget the year 1755 then the next stage in the development of dictionaries in english is marked by charles richardson's a new dictionary of english language which was published in 1836. In addition to widening the scope of illustrative quotations, Richardson also attempted to indicate 
the historical use of words uses of words or the meanings which they had in older stages of the language besides their contemporary sense the philological society found in uh, and after that the stars research and you can see that uh, people or group of people compile this um, dictionary together so in 1848 such an effort happened by the philological society and they compiled a new english dictionary on historical principles or the oxford english dictionary it appeared in volumes over a period of 45 years having begun in 1883 and completed in 1928 so it took a long time for its compilation which is which can be considered as say like forefather of this um, recent the oxford english dictionary it was there were so many editors so many authors so many contributors and they took a long time that is from a period of 1883 to 1928 and then they got it published its first editor sir james murray has contributed over half of the work or that means half of the work means 7000 pages joint editors were henry bradley sir william craig uh, c t onions etc okay this dictionary occupies 12 large volumes and comprises more than 1000 15000 pages and the num- total number of words in it are uh, 4,14,825 and illustrated through such 1 lakh above quotations so this is a kind of greatest achievement at that time uh, it was considered as a great achievement in the field of lexicography and it paved um, it has that importance in the semantic development of every english word known to have been used since 12th century this dictionary has the whole history of semantic development of every english word that's why it took such a long time for the compilation phonetic scripts were also recorded so of course you know that there is a difference between the spellings of old english pronunciation of old english middle english and modern english so all these things were recorded phonetic scripts for all these things were recorded it has also included all technical scientific terms of course uh, this is this Uh, it got completed in the beginning of 20th century that means they can uh, easily include all the technical and scientific terms which have emerged in the 18th and 19th centuries we talked about those things in while we discussed word formation which are more widely used in the uh, in this um, enriching the vocabulary no other language in the world can boast of such a complete guide to the usage of new english dictionary The first supplement to the dictionary was published in 1933 in the same year with the title the Oxford English Dictionary there were different kinds of dictionaries coming up by that time a transatlantic supplement to this was a dictionary of american english on historical principles produced by sir william craig and james r hulbert in 1944 so for ordinary working purpose it is the american uh, earlier it is the american version of bible uh, by not bible sorry dictionary for ordinary working purpose the material of the oxford dictionary has been summarized into the two volumes that is the shorter oxford english dictionary oxford english dictionary it is further reduced for speedier consultation as in and renamed as the concise oxford his dictionary of current english and the little oxford dictionary so though the oxford dictionary has long been established as the highest authority in all matters of language in matters of pronunciation most foreigners depend on daniel jones of course you i can bet that you all have a copy of daniel jones in your home especially for helping yourself with your phonetic transcripts it is the it is especially for the phonetic transcripts and english pronouncing dictionary he recorded typical southern english pronunciation in ordinary conversation and he has actually followed rp or received pronunciation which we have discussed when we uh, talked about um, english as um, rise of standard english and english as a global language so now coming to the trees of the dictionaries of america when you uh, try, uh, try to trace the evolution on development of dictionaries in america nova webster has been the pioneer in the field so keep that in mind Amer- in coming to american dictionaries nova webster has been the pioneer so here uh, in uk it uh, the um, this um, 
this fame goes to Thomas Cooper in 1565, whether as in Amer America, it is Noah Webster, has been the pioneer in the field with, with his Compendious English Dictionary, which was published in 1806. Okay, um, America has, of course, um, a small history because, of course, you know, it, uh, they started developing only when Pilgrim Fathers migrated to that place in the 17th century. Okay, so the first dictionary was published by Noah Webster in 1806. This was followed in 1828 by Webster's American Dictionary and Webster's International Dictionary in 1890. So, please keep in mind, Noah Webster, then Webster's American Dictionary in 1828, uh, then Webster's International Dictionary in 1890. This in turn was followed by Webster's New International Dictionary in 1909 and its second edition in 1934. Webster's third new international dictionary was planned, published in 1961. So you have a little bit of history of the dictionaries in America, starting from Noah Webster to this third Webster's third international dictionary, which was published in 1961. So, yeah. Of course, you know that the chief function of a dictionary is to record usage, how the words are being used. So the whole concept is being established uh, by um, and they stood for the linguistic correctness of their word, word or an expression. Okay, so Fowler in his uh, A Dictionary to, of Modern English Usage published in 1926, later he got it revised twice, uh, worked on this, the correct linguistics correctness of a uh, word. So now this we consider this Fowler's dictionary is considered as a standard work of reference and enjoys a position of authority among all the uh, similar uh, in the same way we consider Daniel Jones for pronunciation for uh, pronunciation it is considered as the final word for RP or received pronunciation uh, similarly then um, and also it also gives the variants of American. Uh, pronunciation too. You can find that too in the Daniel Jones Dictionary. Even though since we follow RP, we actually grab the Daniel Jones Dictionary and go for uh, checking our pronunciations. And for linguistic correctness, we actually uh, follow Fowler. So the influence of Fowler's work is evident in the popular handbooks on usage published by writers like Robert Graves, Eric Patrick, Sir Ellen Herbert and Sir Ernest Gers. So these modern le lexicographers, grammarians and politicians are becoming arbiters of good speech. So uh, you have got an interesting uh, history of dictionaries which definitely you should know while uh, learning the history of English language because it is all about language, uh, linguistics and the uh, importance of words you used to deal with. So uh, please um, read through the essay carefully be sure of the years because it is important and focus more on uh, dr johnson's dictionary then uh, don't um, forget the american part okay so yeah we'll stop here and have a nice day